and we are the group 4 and our topic is all about the audio media so when we say audio media means pre-recorded magnetic tapes used in non-commercial playback of sounds on audio equipment and also it is very good in supporting and motivational medium when we say sound it is a waves of air molecules so sound is very important in our daily life because it helps us to communicate with others. By sound, we can understand the context of the words spoken. And sound can help people to protect themselves from danger such as the horn of the train and other vehicles to warn people to give way or etc. Next is audio. So audio, it is used particularly for learners with reading and or other learning difficulty and those who are visually impaired. So we will going to compare hearing versus listening. Hearing. Hearing is one of the five senses of a person. It is the ability to perceive sound by detecting vibrations through organs such as our ears. According to Merriam-Webster, it is the process, function, or power of perceiving sound, especially the special sense by which noises and tones are received as stimuli. On the other hand, listening, also known as active learning, it is where after brain receives the nerve impulse, it interprets, then it sends feedback. It is the key to co good communication, so therefore, it requires concentration so that it can lead to better academic performance. So the next topic is the techniques on how to develop listening skills. So that will go into report by the next reporter. Thank you. Good morning, classmates. My name is Arthur Nanias Batukal. I am the next reporter. My report is the six techniques on how to develop listening skills. First, direct listenings. So, as a teacher, uh, let us give first the student objective or question that will guide their listening before presenting the audio material to the class. Halimbawa, pagbibigay ng mga printed na mga kagamitan tulad ng module at iba pa. Pagbibigay ng malinaw na instruction upang maintindihan ng mga bata. Dahil dito, mas naiintindihan ng mga bata o mga tao kung ano ang inilalahad sa material sa audio na klase. Second, following directions. As a teacher, he was able to clarify what he was giving listen lessons to the children. For example, pagbibigay ng kompletong direksyon sa pagsasanay upang maintindihan ng mga bata ang kanilang pagsasagot. Listening for main ideas, details, or inferences. Provide a guide to what to listen to such as key ideas, details, or specific information. For example, Mom April gave her idea on technology. Because of this, the children already understood what technology is. Fourth, using context in listening. Identifying meanings in an auditory context by listening to sentences with missing words and then giving the appropriate words. Five, 
analyzing the structures of a presentation. Student may be asked to outline what they heard after making. For example, pagpapakita ng mga presentation at pagtanong sa kanila kung ano ang kanilang napakinggan at naintindihan sa presentation. Lastly is number six. Distinguish between relevant and irrelevant informations. Identify relevant and irrelevant information after listening to a given audio materials. And here ends my report. According to unknown, the most basic of all human needs is to need to understand and be understood. The best way to understand people is to listen to them. Good day everyone, my name is Normi Talino and this morning I will be continuing the report of Mr. Batukal. Now let's go to the audio format. So when we say audio format, it is a file format for storing sound or music. So it can either be analog or a digital. So audio recordings have two basic types, which is the analog and the digital. But this moment, let's talk first what is analog. So analog, it refers to the audio recorded using methods that replicates the original sound waves. Digital audio. These are files kept on digital storage, such as CDs, computer, hard drive, a flash drive, or digital recorded. Next is computers are digital devices. The method of computing referred to as a binary system, meaning they perform calculation using ones and zeros. These are saved in MP3 or WAV format. Most commonly used audio files are WAV or the WAV files and MPEG layer 3 which is the MP3 files. So now, let's talk the three audio file types which is the WAV, MP3, and the WMA. So WAV stands for WAV Format Audio Files. Standard audio file format used mainly in Windows PCs. So it is considered as a first generation format. So WAB provides a higher level of sound quality preferred by many recordings professionals. So take note that WAV is uncompressed audio format. So next is the MP3 or the MPEG layer 3. It is used for compressing audio file into a very small file that it is used for digital storage and transmission so it is the most popular format for downloading and storing music it is the most common audio file work on most devices file can be a small the mp3's popularity is primarily due to its versatility and instantly playable and the last one is the wma or the windows media audio it is a Microsoft audio file format which is used for compressing audio files. So the WMA, it doesn't translate well to the other operating system. So it is developed by Microsoft. So it can only play on Windows devices. So take note that MP3 and WMA is a Lucy audio format. So there are three types of digital audio files which is the uncompressed, lossless, and the Lucy. So files do not use data compression, offer highest audio quality, but largest files. So next is the Lucy. Files use data compression to greatly reduce the size of the audio files. It has a negative effect, so it will affect the quality of your music. And the last one is the lossless. So they use a special type of data compression called the lossless encoding. So it reduces the size of the file without affecting the quality of the audio. So that's all for today. I hope you learned a lot from my report and God bless us all.
Hello, good morning everyone. My name is Josie S. Martinez and today I'm going to discuss about the digital storage devices up to types of optical disks. So what is digital storage devices? Digital storage devices is the recording of digital information in a storage medium, usually by electronic means. This device typically enables a user to store a large amount of data in a relatively small physical space and make sharing that information with others easy. The device can, may be capable of holding the data either temporarily or permanently. It can also be used as a backup for important information. The examples are the hard drive disk, floppy disk, CDs, tapes, and etc. Under the digital storage devices is the optical disk. Optical disk, it is a storage medium for which data is read and to which it is written by lasers. It is common for storing digital data like music and other types of data. Audio CD were available since 1982 as a physical storage medium for audio. Optical disc used as a portable and secondary storage device. Optical disc can store more data than the previous generation of magnetic storage media and has a relatively longer lifespan. CDs or compact discs, DVD, digital versatile or video discs, and Blu-ray discs is the most common optical discs that are used. Here are the types of optical disc. The first one is the read-only memory or ROM. ROM is used for distribution of standard program and data files. It comes with data already encoded onto them. It cannot be modified because it is permanent but can read a number of times. This type of storage medium that permanently stores data on personal computers, PCs, and other electronic devices because ROM is read-only, it cannot be changed and it is permanent. The second type of optical disc is the right ones read many or worm. This disc can be written to only once. The information stored on the disc cannot be changed or erased. This device disc store data in a non-rewritable format to prevent users from accidentally erasing or altering sensitive information. Worm is also known as write once, run anywhere, or wara. The third and the last type of optical disc is the rewritable write many, or WMRM. This disc allow information to be recorded and erased many times. And that's all for my report about digital storage devices, optical disc, and the types of optical discs. The next topic that will be discussed is about the analog audio. Good morning everybody! My name is Nova May Raza and I am going to continue our report and let's proceed to analog audio. Let's start! Audio media. What is analog audio? Analog audio sound began its life in 19th century, progressing with quality over time. It has been overtaken by digital audio at the end of 90th century. It is a representation of a sound that is analogous to the air pressure waves of the sound. Analog audio sound has much broader frequency range. It records and reproduces sounds much more accurately but suffer from electric noise issues. Analog audio media is much more bulky, expensive, harder to produce, maintain, and distribute. It is a representation of the intensities of those waves in a different form such as voltage on a wire or magnetized particle on a cassette tape. It reads media by scanning the physical data of the media. For example, audio type players, VCRs, and record players. And now, here is a guidelines on how to use a microphone to record analog audio of a sound. First, Place the microphone on a floor or table stand away from hard surfaces such as chalkboards, windows, or bare walls. If a stand is not available, place on a hand towel or other soft cloth. Second, place the microphone on a good spot to achieve maximum pickup of desired sounds and minimal pickup of extraneous ones. 
Avoid handling the microphone from one person to another if necessary. Move people instead before recording. Third, maintain the constant distance from the microphone. As a rule of thumb, your mouth should be about a foot from the microphone. If you are much closer, P and B will tend to pop and other breathly sound may become annoying. The P and B sound should be studied together. They are produced in the same part of the mouth which is in the front with the tongue in the same place. The only difference is that the P sound is voiceless sound and the B sound is voice sound. Lastly, number four, speak over the top of the microphone, not directly into it. Please take note that an analog recording is considered unlimited. Therefore, it can move to a higher and higher resolution without losing its original quality. In the end, both analog and digital have their place and use in our world, and it all comes down to personal preferences. Thank you. Good morning to each and everyone. My name is Grace Nicoloma and here is the continuation of our report. Accessing audio. In accessing audio, there is streaming audio. It is the method of delivering audio signal to your computer with the use of internet. As the data arrives, it is buffered for a few seconds and then playback begins. Buffering means downloading a certain amount of data before starting to play the audio. It buffered for a few seconds after receiving the data so that the audio can continue playing even if there's a brief internet connection problem. If the ISP or internet service provider is fast enough to keep up with the playback, then buffering is unnecessary. Here are some of the most popular and well-known websites that allow audio streaming. Number one, Spotify. Number two, Pandora. Number three, Last.fm. Number four, Rhapsody. And number five, Groove Shark. Those websites are known in enabling users to access remotely millions of songs through the use of various devices. The next one is Podcast. It is a combination of the words iPod and Broadcast. Pod, which is the, an Apple's iPod, the popular portable audio player, and cast from the word broadcast, which means to transmit for general or public use. Podcast refers to the recorded audio file in MP3 distributed over the internet. These audio files can be sent automatically to the subscribers and stored to their computers for listening at their convenience. Podcasts can be accessed anytime and anywhere. All you need to do is just to download it before you can listen to them. Podcast is another method of entertaining, educating, informing, and sharing thoughts to the public. And that's all for my report. Thank you and God bless. I am Princess Dawn S. Tumang and today I will be going to discuss the internet radio, digital players and also the creating audio. So first, the internet radio. It is an internet or Wi-Fi radios that can give you an access to thousands of internet radio stations. It is a digital audio service transmitted via the internet and it can either be used as a standalone device running through the internet or as a software running through a single computer. The most popular internet radio platforms and applications in the world includes the TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and the Sirius XM. And here are some examples of internet radio stations here in the Philippines. Wish 107.5 FM Mellow 94.7 FM and Yes FM Manila 101.1 Next is the digital players. These are also called as mobile digital media players. These are portable electronic gadgets used to store and play digital media such as audio or video files in various formats. Some examples of devices that qualify as a digital media players are First, smartphone. Second, satellite navigation receivers. Third is digital camera. Fourth, internet connected tablets. And fifth is the smart watches.
And the last one is creating audio. Using a sound recorder. Sound recording, transcription of vibrations in air that are perceptible as sound into a storage medium, such as phonograph disc. In sound, reproduction the process is recorded so that the variations stored on the medium are converted back into sound waves. There are two types of sound recorder, the audio recorder and the digital audio recorder. For audio recording devices range from tape-based recorders such as micro, mini, and standard audio cassettes in reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders. And for digital audio recorders also that are recorded on compact disc, hard drives, and media cards. And the second one, the Audacity. Audacity is free, easy to use, multi-track, audio editor and recorder for Windows, Mac OS, GNU or Linux, and other operating system. You can also use Audacity to record live audio through microphones or mixer or digitize recording from the other media. And that's the end of my report. Hello everyone, I'm Alexandra Adja. So for today, my topic is all about application of audio in the classroom. Students can hear the voices of experts by listening to their ideas and opinions. By using audio tape or audio recordings, it can help the learner perform a task such as an experiment when written notes are available. Students also can generate their own recording which can be part of their learning activity. Also, it can provide public lectures, learn a new languages, and can be used as a motivation to start a class. So keep students active and engaged, promote growth mindset over fixed mindset, develop meaningful and respectful relationship with your students and also be inspiring.